saw so many formulas in a presentation when I was in a grad school probably around 15 years back. Okay, <laughs> so um, this talk is going to be slightly different. Um, uh, at Intel, uh, I lead a developer relation division group uh, which predominantly talks with the software companies who are developing products and then the end customers who are deploying those products and uh, particularly in the areas of data center and then artificial intelligence and the internet of things and how to tune and optimize their solutions on Intel hardware. So uh, many a times when we talk to our developers, they're saying, hey, what's coming from Intel next? What kind of a hardware is coming? And here is my use case. I'm trying to do a video analytics and I'm trying to include a deep learning and a machine learning. Uh, and I want to do a little bit of analytics on the edge. Uh, what kind of a hardware that should be looking into? So uh, what I'll cover over the next like, you know, 30 minutes is uh, uh, what kind of a hardware that is coming from Intel for a variety of use cases. Um, many people, you know, may or may not know that uh, we do have a lot of software libraries as well. Okay, so I'm going to touch upon all that. Uh, and so as a developer, uh, what is that you can take advantage of that without really worrying about the features in the hardware, without really worrying about, you know, writing your own uh, code, but use them and then, you know, faster you can go into the market. And then in the end, uh, I'll also cover a little bit about um, how do we work with the ecosystem? Uh, and we do have several programs and we have one of the largest developer, uh, you know, <clears throat> Uh, developer programs in the world, and so we'll, we'll cover a little bit on that. So it's going to be slightly different than uh, what you've uh, heard the first two. Okay, so how many of you have seen a movie I, Robot? Okay, I think most of us, right? So I saw it too, uh, probably around 12 to 13 years back. And uh, I, I mean, if you guys remember, uh, particularly there's one scene. Okay, and, and by the way, the movie is about robots, and then uh, there's a scientist and then who develop robots, they're intelligent, and then the, one of the robots basically breaks the commandment or robot commandments and then basically become a rogue. And there's one scene uh, that I remember vividly is where Will Smith is going in the tunnel in his autonomous car, okay, and then he's actually talking to the car or computer and then asking some data uh, which is investigating uh, on the death of that particular scientist. And so he's talking and then he's getting answers. And suddenly, you know, there is a, a couple of trucks come and then um, he presses a, you know, a button in the car and then the car asks him, are you sure you are going to do the manual drive? Okay? And then he says yes and then he takes the control of the car. And then, uh, you know, rest follows. This was a sci-fi, you know, probably around 12 years back. It was a science fiction even around probably six years back. But if you really look at now, it can actually become a reality. And we are seeing particularly the automotive driving as one of the key segment for at least our growth. And without artificial intelligence, it would not have possible. And the movie, the plot, everything is in 2035. And you know, if all goes well and then you know, we all do our job well, hopefully we'll be able to bring it back by 10 to 12 years, you know, that's a thing. <coughs> now, Okay, so w why it's happening right now? I know artificial intelligence has been around for a while, but if you really look at it, uh, you know, the, the hardware capability was not really there to really take advantage of and then you know, uh, put it into the uh, use. Um, but if you really look into thanks to the Moore's law and then the, the hardware uh, <coughs> innovations that have happened, we are now able to really see and, and then you know train the models and then in the time frame that was acceptable, you know it's acceptable and able to really you know move this particular uh, uh, artificial intelligence uh, you know around. Particularly data, so you need uh, quite a bit of data and the advent of IoT and then the you know various of the smart uh, you know devices around the world which may be around almost around 30 billion devices that are coming and generating all sorts of data data available to train the models to be accurate, you know, really uh, has been increased quite a bit. And, and we really see that some of these innovations are really driving, uh, you know, the usage, uh, different usage models in the AI space. Uh, you know, uh, we've seen some of these major transitions, at least in Intel, we see that, you know, from mainframe to traditional x86, and then x86 standard based servers into the cloud. And then we see that this artificial intelligence workload is the next big one. Today, when we see the overall number of servers you know, deployed in the world, 
around 7% of them, they are running the machine learning and deep learning workloads, okay? Out of that 7%, around 60% are running the traditional ML, uh, you know, workloads, and then the 40% of them are running probably, you know, the deep learning workloads. It's very, very small, you know, compared to what possible, and we envision that the AI compute cycles, it's all the way from training to scoring to inference and then, you know, uh, at the edge and then at the cloud, we're going to see almost like a 12x, you know, a growth in the pure compute, okay, that the artificial intelligence workload will run over the next few years, okay. This is just, uh, uh, you know, some data points, uh, it, it's staggering. Uh, the people who are sitting here, you know, probably checking their WhatsApp and then, you know, uh, and then the tweeting or, you know, looking into video, typically generates around 1.5 gigabytes per data per day. It's 1.5 gig, right? And thanks to the 3G and 4G, the consumption of the video and the amount of, you know, video calls that we do, etc., is really contributing to that. But if you really compare that to a smart hospital, okay, um, you're almost talking about 3,000 gigabytes per day. Okay, and if you look into a self-driving car, you know, the one which I talked about a few minutes back, that's going to generate a 4,000 GB per day. So just imagine, and all sorts of structured, unstructured, you know, uh, somewhere in the middle, all kind of data will be generated. And if you consider some other use cases, it will be even more. So uh, this is going to really grow. And, and then, you know, <clears throat> AI, with the help of the compute and the software innovations and the work run around is going to really accelerate significant amount of the challenges or you know solve problems which we would have otherwise would not have thought of you know closing and and if it's going if traditionally it would have taken like you know decades you know with the help of artificial intelligence particularly in the areas of you know finance or healthcare you know i think that one more track that's going on in the healthcare is going to solve that problem in a much uh, you know faster way and to really help all around Okay. And particularly if you look into India, okay, and, uh, and as I said, my group works very closely even with the, the government agencies, the lot of software companies, and then uh, I'm also part of the NASCOM, uh, you know, product council, and so we work with, you know, several deep tech companies in the areas of AI, machine learning and deep learning. These are some of the areas at least where we see a lot of opportunity, okay. Uh, if you're looking into the government, you know, security, uh, I'm not sure how many of you know, but government has actually done 109 smart cities, okay? And, uh, you know, multiple are already in uh, happening. And one of the key, uh, you know, usage in the, or one of the key things in the smart city is a, uh, a DSS segment, which is a digital surveillance security. And our team is working uh, with multiple software companies who are doing video analytics, okay? And today, most of those video analytics is predominantly a traditional analytics where you take an analog camera or IP camera and then you do something. But in, in a few years, once the smart cities are there and developing, you will see the machine learning, deep learning algorithms coming into the both edge and the server to really make it even more you know, meaningful. So I think this is one of the areas where we see and we are already working with many of the companies uh, who are into this. In addition to that healthcare, uh, I think, uh, um, the, uh, in India, there are around 300 or so startups, uh, you know, which are working on machine learning and deep learning. And healthcare is one of the key things. And if you look into India, you know, it's, people are calling it as the diabetes capital of the world. The amount of cancer patients and the heart patients is going to increase significantly, thanks to our lifestyle and the vadas and the, the bhajiyas, etc. I think healthcare is going to be one of the very important factors. I think the, uh, somebody was telling me, uh, you know, when I was talking that there is a, uh, there is a company in India uh, which basically takes the uh, photo of your thumb and then, you know, do some, uh, uh, you know, image recognition, etc., and tell you whether you are anemic or not, okay? And then there are, similarly, there are so many different such companies that are going to come out. You know, some is going to either predict what's going to happen or give you a personalized care. So healthcare is going to be one, you know, important factor. The third one, what we are going to see is a huge opportunity, particularly for India, is IT. Uh, you know, particularly on the chatbots and all the customer. You don't really need to go in and talk to a human being and 24 by 7 you are going to get, uh, you know, uh, a work there. So those are some of the segments where we are important and it's no different, uh, you know, outside of India as well. So I'm going to skip this. I think I already talked about a little bit. Uh, let me go right into, you know, where we come in. Okay. So 
in intel we are calling it as a virtuous cycle of growth what we are seeing is with the huge amount of devices that generating data you know that's pushing all it back to the data center to go and then analyze and the more analysis that you in the data center and then you make really you know um, uh, give value to the users again that's pushing more and more end devices so th this is going into virtuous cycle okay and this is a huge opportunity at least for the for us and what we are seeing is uh, some of the technologies like 5g uh, you know which is already there uh, we are already working with some of the uh, you know uh, uh, players uh, that's going to really revolutionize particularly the use cases such as autonomous drive okay so if you look into us uh, we are you know having a portfolio all the way from uh, hardware to software to communication technology which is going to be very critically deploying whether it's a training whether it's a inference uh, you know these ai solutions and technologies uh, you know in the world so just to give you a few uh, you know examples um, in the hardware space uh, traditionally you know there are specific xeon uh, servers uh, which are running a typical x86 machine learning deep learning algorithms and there is a many core architecture which is we call as a xeon phi which is this smaller amount of cores but many of them and which can really take advantage of the huge parallelism and the vectorization if you can do and then get you a much better performance particularly from a training side etc and then if you are really looking at the low latency particularly when you are getting stream of data which you have to really crunch and then do something about it in in, in like spot stock pick etc and that's where you know a very low uh, the hardware such as fpgas which is a field programming data is might be a more uh, you know uh, useful there and then uh, finally if you are looking into the edge for example i talked about the video surveillance where you actually have to do some kind of analytics at the right at the edge uh, we do have some hardware out there which is going to do it for you so in general it's all the hardware and then software is going to be very important so we have done some acquisitions uh, you know in safra which is a reasoning system uh, and then we started to you know incorporate them into us um, and then uh, we are also you know looking into some other companies like nirvana and nirvana is one of the world leaders in asic uh, they are going to have a specialized hardware which is you know speed up your training um, model of the training quite a bit okay so across the spectrum and then we are also working on the 5g communication which is going to be important and then the memory so just to give you a overview of what kind of a you know a portfolio that we have that a developer can take advantage of it now when we talk to the developer they say typically bunch of the you know um, pain points they're saying look you know hardware is changing we may not understand the complete uh, you know technologies that are coming into the hardware and sometimes you know uh, when we do when we train when we, when we deploy into the customer maybe they are having a different hardware so you know they may not be really skilled in optimization and really going that deep level and writing that you know the the, the code the second thing they say is hey i'm developing a particular ai solution but there is i have a core algorithm and you know i'm very skilled on to it but i do need this spe specific libraries which i may not have which either i match make with some of the other uh, isvs or an optimized library that i can make use so that i can focus on my algorithm and then develop my use case and not have to worry about all that so that's a typical other thing that come to us the third typical pain point that come to us is you know i'm not getting any performance and my training time is taking way too much time etc so what we have done is we have kind of looked into that so a typically a developer if you look at it is on the uh, is on the top he is basically creating a you know a use cases or an application and then you know if you look into the four levels below is where you know we see kind of a hardware okay so i talked a little bit on the hardware side already so i'm not going to worry about it and we continue to you know come up with a new hardware you know uh, over the next few years and then on top of it is our libraries so not many people know that we have a, a holistic set of library for example we have got our own python distribution so all the sci fi's and the num fi's we have been optimized on our hardware so that it can take advantage to give you much better performance intel dart is basically a data analytics analytics and then acceleration library which takes to a, a traditional machine learning you know stuff like a pre processing for post processing analytics we have taken bunch of those and actually optimized for the underlying hardware here so that you can directly write on to that okay 
And then the next one is basically the math kernel library and then the math kernel library DNS, which we call as the deep neural networks, MKL and MKL DNN. These are those real primitive, uh, you know, uh, algorithms uh, which really require uh, writing it to the writing to the hardware, writing to the instruction sets that are available in the hardware, so that you can get the maximum performance out of it. So there are multiple of these primitives, and MKL DNN is actually open source. One can download, and the beta is available. I'll tell you where you can get all this information in, in the next few slides. Intel MLSL is basically, you know, a scaling library, right? So. If you really look into the training, which is going to be extremely compute intensive, um, many of the people are also looking into a cluster of machines where they train. For example, if a particular single node takes, you know, n hours to, you know, basically train your deep neural network model, if I have an 8 node, if I have a 16 node or 64 node, the time to train is going to be significantly lower. Okay, and so as a developer, what you need to do is to basically make sure that the training model actually scales very well as you increase the number of nodes, right? And, and as you increase the number of nodes, your total work that is get, getting done by a node will come down and the communication will increase. So you need to take care so that you know you, you get the scale. So this particular library, you know, what we have worked on is optimizes that. So you as a developer don't have to worry about, you know, all that. So we will take it uh, care for you. And then the Intel Nirvana graph, it's going to be a new one, it's not yet out there, but it's actually a graph compiler which is going to take your data flow and then compile it into a hardware agnostic, uh, you know, uh, thing. So that's going to come out a little bit more sooner. So, you know, these are some of the examples of, you know, s the software libraries that are available. So check them out. In addition to that, you know, people typically don't write even that to that level. You know, most of the, you know, at least ISVs or most of the customers that we go into, they're all looking into frameworks, right? These are the, you know, uh, frameworks that are pretty much everybody know, like, you know, the TensorFlow and then the CAFE, etc. So we have taken those and actually optimized on the Intel hardware, okay? So you, if you're using a CAFE, all you can do is, you know, go and then get an Intel optimized CAFE. And, and I got a couple of use cases in how we are able to get the performance and you'll be able to get the performance on your hardware assuming that you're running on Intel hardware, okay? So all of these, we've taken advantage of that, you know, Tiano, Torch, Cafe, TensorFlow, etc. And even, I don't know, not sure how many of you know, in Japan, you know, Chainer, it's one of the open source, uh, you know, framework, it's been highly used, and we are also working on that one. So again, you know, something for you to go and look into if you're already running it, are you running on an Intel optimized Cafe? If not, go in and get it so that you can get some performance right there. And then, in, in, on top of that, we do have some special SDKs, okay? And uh, we have got something deep, uh, deep learning SDK. I'm, I'm not going to many detail, but then you know you get an idea. We have got a CV SDK with all those primitives already implemented and optimized on hardware. And then uh, you know, and and uh, we just released something very interesting called as Movidius. Movidius is one of the company that we acquired. Uh, it's a deep, uh, you know, it's a compute stick. Uh, not sure if you guys have uh, heard about it, but it has got really a compute stick which can plug it into your laptop, and then uh, it has got a CNN optimized and everything. If you want to do a quick prototype, you're able to do right on your laptop. So that compute stick you got available recently, okay? So one thing is, you know, just if you are running on Intel, go in and check these guys out, and then so that you can get a much, uh, you know, better performance. Some case studies, I'm not going to the detail, uh, you know, uh, a China, um, you know, a cloud service provider, video cloud service provider that we work with, uh, they were basically using the adapted open source BVLC cafe uh, with the CNN framework. And then when we worked with them, and then basically, you know, with the using of math kernel library and also Intel optimized cafe, we were able to decrease their training time by 30x. I mean, this is not simple like a few percentage, but actually you're going to see a much better performance when you use some of those. This is the second one, again, um, you know, if you look into on the left hand side, this is a combination of a hardware and software, right? Because we have many customers who are using different level of hardware, the SKUs are different, etc. So if you look into the leftmost thing, it is using a two socket, which is a you know, two processor, Xeon processor uh, with uh, F2 blast, and then when the second line is basically when they use MKL, which is a 2017 version of MKL, they're going to get straight away three and a half X, you know, performance improvement. And then when they went to the newest uh, hardware, which is the next generation of hardware server, and then use the MKL, which is already optimized for the newest hardware, they were able to get even further two X. So almost like, you know, eight X from the, uh, you know, from the beginning. And then when they went to the third generation of server, which is the latest generation that we have, they're able to get almost like around 18x. And this is the, uh, these are all actual use cases that you know we have. 
So again, you know, a combination of a hardware and software can make a lot of difference for you. And so make sure that, you know, you look into some of those. So that particularly if you're having a challenges in the performance area and then getting real time, whatever your you know, goal that you have, and then you'll be able to, you know, get those. Uh... One of the use cases that we're very, very, you know, uh, excited about is an opportunity that autonomous drive. Uh, as we speak now, we are working with BMW, which is one of the, you know, a big company. And also we are working with uh, Audi. Uh, you know, recently we announced that we are going to work with Audi and other car makers. And we have seen that, you know, this particular, you know, uh, segment is growing faster than we actually think. Uh, recently we also announced that uh, we are going to uh, look into doing, uh, getting a mobile line, uh, one of the Israel-based company who are the world leaders in, uh, you know, some of the leaders and then the... Uh, vision based thing but if you look into how I can use this end to end use cases where there is inference in car okay what we call it a software defined cockpit uh, which is going to be in the car which is going to do some of the compute and all the way the models and everything which is trained in the back end and then so that you know um, um, we have these some of these technologies that can be used end to end and in the autonomous driving particularly the communication in the low latency is absolutely critical because the car has to take really, you know, uh, a decision right away, whether it's, uh, you know, a, a, a person or a dog or a cat or somebody is driving, you know, all those are going to be very, very critical and the latency be critical. So we are spending a quite a bit of from time G, uh, you know, 5G uh, and go from there. So this is just a one end-to-end -end use case, how you can take the plethora of the technologies from software to hardware to compute and then the connectivity and then basically get your use case driven. And this is just one example that can be many other examples, uh, you know, going forward. Uh, going into the little bit more details into the hardware itself, sometimes it's not just one particular hardware, but also, also you can take combination of a hardware to get, you know, your models trained. So just a few examples, uh, on, the, on the top on side is the training the models and then the, you know, the, the bottom is the inference. For example, if you are training, uh, you know, a sample, a simple machine learning, then you can either go for any Xeon or Xeon 5. But if you are going with the many bot math batch models and the real deep neural network training, then uh, in, in addition to the Xeon 5 or Xeon, we are also coming up with the uh, specialized ASIC from a Nirvana. So this particular ASIC is highly, highly optimized to bring your training time a quite a bit, okay? So this is going to come out and which we are calling it as a leg crest, you know, later this year, okay? And then uh, we, 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 you'll come to know more about it over the next, uh, you know, few hours. But we are really uh, looking into that ASIC to reduce the training time. And if you look into the inference, which is in the bottom, um, if, if we don't really need a real time, then you can go with probably an FPGA plus a Xeon if you got to have a day to train and then you know put in the model, uh, it's not really real time. But if you really look into the real time that I need absolutely low latency and then for example, you know, just a stock prediction and if your you know, stream of data that's coming at you, you know, high speed and then you go to really make sense of something really fast, then something like an FPGA uh, with a really highly optimized uh, algorithm we're going to give you, you know, a much better performance. So I think there are various of these models that you need to look into. And when you're actually developing or deploying in customers, typically those are the questions that we get asked a lot. Is in, okay, what can I use? What is available? How can I bring this time? Typically they come up with a problem and we go and then try to help them in, with the, what architecture and what technology that we have. Okay. So this is the next version. So the Lake Crest version is going to come with, uh, uh, you know, come uh, later this year. But as we move along over the next three years, uh, one thing what we are trying to do is the specialized ASICs, okay, which are highly optimized with the deep learning, machine learning, you know, thing. We are going to integrate right into the Xeon, uh, you know, die. Okay, so you'll get to see that integrated, uh, you know, acceleration that is coming in, uh, and, and we are expecting that almost a reduction of our 100x in the training model itself. So you'll see a lot of those coming and then more information over the next you know, year or two, but watch out for some of those real innovations or changes that are happening in that field that might be interesting to few of you. Okay. Now, this is basically about the product, but uh, my day job is to work with the software ISVs and then the companies that I talked about. How are we working with them? And then how are we working with the ecosystem? And uh, you know, over the next couple of slides, we'll talk about that. Uh, 
most of the information what I talked about, we have a, one of the largest developer program called software.intel.com. Uh, this is the, you know, where we are working with almost around, uh, you know, um, six and a half thousand ISVs worldwide and over 20 million developers come to that website, okay? And we have various different modules in addition to uh, obviously artificial intelligence which is going to be hot. We have got technical computing which is HPC and modern code and we have gaming, we have uh, internet of things. Uh, various of these different uh, themes uh, where developer come in and then get uh, educated. Uh, we also have a lot of sample codes, we also have a lot of tools that you can download and then try them out and you also have a lot of forums wherein you can actually post your question and get answers pretty uh, closely, okay? So this is a one-stop shot, software.intel.com, uh, you know, if you're not known, if you don't know about it, go in and check it out. But if you really look into AI, you know, okay, I talked about some of the hardware, software, if you want to go and say, hey, I'm interested in DLSDK or the CDSDK, what I can I do? And this is one of the areas which we are calling as a Nirvana AI Academy. And this is again a, a portal where you can go and get all those technical content, uh, you know, available. Right from the videos, the, you know, the blogs, and then you're going to get a lot of white papers, the code samples, you know, the tools, libraries, everything. Uh, it is there in the AI Academy. And also there is a free and then the, there is also a member, again it's free. You can actually become a member and get a lot more additional resources and get direct connect with some of the, you know, people uh, within Intel. Okay, again, the, if you are really interested in it, the tools, uh, you know, the community, uh, uh, we already have a lot of developers already on here. So, you know, you can go and then check it out. The another program that we run, I, I think we've seen uh, quite a few success over the last few years, is what we call as an Intel Software Innovator Program. So a lot of these, you know, software developers, they're actually very active in the community. They're going and then doing a lot of meetups and then, uh, you know, um, doing that. So what we do is we basically, you know, make them uh, under this program. We have around, uh, in APJ alone, which is the Asia Pacific in Japan, which I run, we have around uh, 30 odd uh, Intel, uh, you know, innovators in there. And then out of it, are in India alone, we have got around 20, okay? Uh, these guys are typically the guys who are very interested in understanding more. And they get a lot of benefits by becoming an Intel software innovator. For example, they're almost like an NDA wherein we give them a lot of early technology, you know, uh, some of this stuff, what I talked about, you know, we give them. Uh, almost like what we give it to our customers, etc. So they will know what is coming in. They'll also get a remote access to our hardware. So we, we do have a bunch of clusters that in the available. So if you want to try it out, you know, you can be an innovator and then get access to that hardware and then run a bunch of your experiments on top of it directly. We also get, you know, the tools and then we also, you know, get a lot of this technical content. That's, that's you know, a very big. The second thing also you get is, you know, a lot of rotatory end exposure from a brand perspective. And if you want knowing that community of uh, innovators, everything, that's another one. And then if you really, you know, going ahead and then, you know, um, attending some of these uh, 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 meetups and another thing, we also support you. So if you're not uh, aware of it and if you're interested, you can check it out. Uh, it's again Intel Software uh, Innovator. I think we are going to have around two to three innovators here today. Uh, if, if you want, you can talk to them about it and then see, you know, um, if you're interested. Um, I'm not going to cover quite a bit. We do have sp uh, a special thing for academia. I'm not sure how many people are here from academia, but there is a slightly separate program that we run. Uh, again, it's a very, very similar. Uh, and then, uh, uh, again, this is for the student ambassador. So, finally, again, you know, I told you that in the, in the beginning, it's a slightly different talk, wherein I'm going to touch upon you with, you know, what is Intel's vision, where we see some of the you know, opportunities, particularly that where you can develop some of your solutions, etc. At the same time, uh, you know, what kind of innovations or what is the idea that we are doing, particularly around the hardware, on which predominantly most of these artificial intelligence workloads, both the uh, uh, machine learning and deep learning kind of are run, okay? At this afternoon, there is a very detailed technical session. I just gave you a very, very 50,000 feet wherein one of my co-worker, Mukesh, is going to come and really drive down into all these different things. So if you're not, if you're, if you're not aware, you can check it out, it's at 3 p.m. This is going to be almost like a more than an hour workshop going into deep into some of these aspects that I talked about. And then uh, again, this is going to be really, really exciting. Uh, if you've seen, if you've not seen anything in the last, you know, three to five, uh, you know, years, I think the next 10 uh, years is going to be one hell of a journey. So I'm glad that you guys are all part of it and together we can make something happen.
Thank you, and then hope you enjoy the rest of the conference, and then uh, good weekend.